What's going on guys, Billy here, and I've been using the DJI Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual now for the past couple of months, and I've been primarily using it on jobs that require thermal roof inspections. Now, I'm not a certified roof inspector. I didn't go to school for this. I didn't go as a class for this. I'm just not certified. So rather than go out and find clients and tell them what's wrong with their roof, I've been teaming up with local contractors, local roofing companies, and local roof inspectors, and I supply them with the images because for them to go out, get their part 107, buy the drone, learn how to use it, it's just a lot so instead they hire me i go out and shoot the photos i deliver the photos or i deliver a little report with the different thermal readings and they're happy with that said in today's video i want to go over the ins and outs of conducting thermal roof inspections with the mavic 2 enterprise dual and the reason behind this video is because when i first got the drone and i wanted to use it for thermal roof inspections there really wasn't any videos showing me how to i kind of had to crawl and then walk and now i feel like i'm running so hopefully with the information i can give you guys you can hit the ground running with your mavic 2 enterprise dual when you're conducting thermal roof inspections so for those wondering the reason these thermal photos are so important is because they can show underlying moisture damage that wouldn't necessarily be visible from the surface this roof here for example doesn't seem to be in the absolute worst condition for its age of over 10 years that is but in all seriousness the roof looks fine flipping things over to the thermal view we can begin to see some spots that are hotter than others this photo here was taken just 15 minutes after the sun set so the sun wasn't hitting it directly but there was a significant difference in temperature as you can see from the values that i overlaid when you're taking these thermal photos and videos, there's a lot of different factors that can skew your results, like the time of day, the temperature, and the weather. So the best time to do a thermal roof inspection is just after the sun sets on a clear and dry day. This will ensure that all the little hot spots that you're going to be picking up from that underlying moisture will be more prominent amongst the areas that aren't damaged. Taking a photo during the middle of the day like this could make it hard to pinpoint areas with hotter temperatures like this big office complex here. In this case, the solar load on the roof is very high as the sun is up in the sky beating right down on the surface. With that said, if you're conducting these inspections at nighttime, be sure to apply for a waiver and use anti-collision lighting, which the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual has when using the light beacon attachment. Now, in all the videos I've made about the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, I've had to address the elephant in the room, and that is the Zenmuse X-T2. That is like the most popular thermal imaging camera that can go on an aerial platform right now, but you've got to look at the price difference between that camera, the X-T2, and the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. I mean, if you want to fly the X-T2, you're going to need an M210 or one of the Matrice 200 drones. You're also going to need a ton of batteries, a big case, a big controller. I mean, you're going to be spending upwards of like twenty dollars to $25,000, but with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual coming in at a competitive price of $2,700, also with it being very small and very easy to use it does have a lot of things going for it now the biggest thing that people are saying is that you cannot use the mavic 2 enterprise dual for roof inspections just because the thermal camera has such a low resolution to it but i would disagree i've been getting by pretty fine and everybody that i've been sending these photos to have said that they're great and i kind of go about this specific method when i'm shooting these photos and i'll go over that in just a couple of seconds but i felt like i had to address that because i know that if there's any like veteran thermal roof inspectors in here they're gonna tear me apart and say that you can't use this drone but i think otherwise the way that i sort of think about it is the mavic is helpful because it's so small right it fits in this really small case and it's able to be set up in less than a minute this definitely has its benefit fits over the larger matrice and is a lifesaver when I have to do multiple inspections in multiple locations in a single day. So with that said, I think that this is going to be geared towards people who are on the go more often with their roof inspections. Maybe a company wants to buy multiple drones and can't afford to buy multiple matrices with the X-T2 camera, with the camera alone costing about 12 grand. So they buy a couple of these, they put them on multiple trucks, and they're good to go. Now, the first step to conducting your thermal roof inspection is pretty straightforward, and it goes for any drone flight out there, and that is preliminary planning. You wanna make sure you check the airspace, you wanna make sure you've got everything, you charge your batteries and go through your pre-flight checklist, and you also wanna check the weather. Remember, you wanna go on a day that is clear, a day that's dry, and just after the sun sets. Now, if you can't get lucky with the weather, you're gonna to have to try to adapt to the current conditions, which you're kind of gonna learn on the fly how to do so, and you wanna make sure you adjust those isotherm settings accordingly. 
Now, once I get to the job site and scout out the area, my first move is to fly as high as I need to to fit the entire roof in the frame. This gives me a general look at everything from a single glance, but as you can see by this example photo here, the thermal view is a little bit blurry. The color photo that is taken simultaneously by the dual camera system looks fine, but this is shot at a much higher resolution. Anyway, back to the thermal view, when we get this preliminary view high in the sky, it gives us an idea at the spots that are appearing hotter than others. My next move is to fly lower, closer to the roof, and capture the different portions of the roof, fully filling the frame all the way around to make sure that I can conduct this entire inspection in as little photos as possible. It's not like I'm lazy and I don't want to do any work, I just don't want to be delivering more photos than I have to, I want to make this as easy to view as possible. So with this roof being on the smaller side, I was able to split it into three different sections, meaning that I was left with three different angles. This is a total of six images because remember, we have the color photos as well and overall this gives us a great look at the areas where there could be under underlying moisture. So when I get there, I shoot that first photo looking straight down of the entire roof. Then I split it up into different sections. So I take one, two, three photos. And then from here, I'll fly even lower to capture some of the areas where I believe that there is definitely moisture underlying underneath of the membrane of the roof because of those hotter areas. And sometimes these differences in temperatures could be like 10 degrees. Like for example, this right here, I believe was like around 60 degrees. And then this was like 71 degrees. So I would definitely go down and focus on the areas in order to capture a much higher resolution rather than taking it from like 200 feet above the roof. So after I've gone to the site and I've taken my necessary photos, I don't just take all those images throw them into Google Drive and then send the link. I like to make it a little bit more detailed if I can by creating a report, which I'm gonna jump on my computer and show you right now. All right, so on my desktop, I've created this example folder. And what I like to do is just send my client one single folder, it makes it easy. I send it over either Google Drive or Dropbox, whatever their preference is. And then within that folder, I have a subfolder titled images, which has all the images that I took, as well as a report I've typed up in the PDF file format. Now within my images folder, I don't just throw all the raw files in here, what I like to do is rename them so they're easy to read, right? So color 001 right here coincides with thermal 001. And I found that all the clients that I've worked with have been able to read through these very easy. In fact, I take it a step further and I actually lay them side by side in their own separate file. So right here, I can see both of those images side by side. I don't have to do anything special or fancy. And I can just continue to flip through all these images without having to go back and forth bouncing between the color and the thermal image. And I find that this makes it a lot easier not only to view but also when I make my report so speaking of that report right let's open that up within preview and right here I've got basically those side-by-side -side images going all the way down right now at the top I like to include my client information which I've obviously withheld for their sake also I include the details of the shoot from that day right like the time taken the weather and the moisture just so that anybody looking at this is going to be aware of the conditions when I shot that day now here is like the biggest complaint that I have about the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, and I think that this is probably the most detrimental thing aside from the low resolution, and that's the fact that you cannot take these photos into FLIR tools for any sort of post-process analyzation. Pretty much what you shoot is what you get. It's just a standard JPEG image. So what I did to, in order to actually capture all of this temperature data is tap around on the screen of my Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, get the temperature reading, and then take a screenshot so that I remember when I'm making up this report. So if I send this to a company, they're not able to bring it in the FLIR tools and they can look at this report and get all the information that they need. But that is one of the biggest complaints that I have about the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual. Now, inside of this report, I've pretty much just gone and I've laid all the images next to each other. Uh, again, I've labeled on the thermal image where the different temperatures are at. It makes it pretty easy to read. Um, and in fact, I've gone and done a facade uh, inspection for this company as well. But focusing on the roof here, uh, again, because you're not able to actually do any post-process analyzation, that's why I find making this report is so, so helpful. And I've gone and I've probably taken up to 100 to 150 screenshots of just one job. So it's a little bit annoying to root through, but it's just the thing you're going to have to do when making this report. So guys, there we have it. That is how I conduct my thermal roof inspections. It's a very simple process. It begins with the preliminary planning. And then once I get on site, I take that one photo initially above the entire roof. I break it up into sections and then I go even closer to the roof and I photograph the areas in which I think are, you know, the ones that need the most attention in the areas that are coming up as much hotter than the rest of the roof. If you guys have any
have any questions, feel free to let me know down in the comment section. I know that there's going to be a lot of people who are saying that this drone is just not viable for roof inspections, but I think that once you start beginning to shoot these photos, and if you're a company that, say, can't spend all the money on the Matrice series, that this is definitely a viable option. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace. Oh, <laughs>